Hello, Kit Heads. We are talking Kit, the home of the greatest football kit content, which is made for football kit fanatics by football kit fanatics. I am Double A, as always. And today on the channel, or this video, is a little something new from us here at Talking Kit. Uh, you may have seen Desert Island kits featured on our old main podcast, as we like to call it. But we thought, as that is ended now, we thought some of the features that were on there, why not make videos out of them? It makes perfect sense. And it gives us an opportunity to do some smaller content. I know it's something that a lot of people who watch the channel are desperate for us to do. Not always does it have to be a two-hour podcast like Full Kit Rankers. Even though I try, even like the last episode that we did, uh, I tried my best to make it an hour. It ended up being an hour and a half. That's just how it is when you talk kit with people who love kits just as much as we do. So we thought, why not get Desert Island Kits as its own series? Uh, yeah, so that's what we are doing. If you've not seen it, Desert Island Kits, it's simple. We've changed it a little bit. So on the podcast, it used to be you would pick a home shirt, an away shirt, and a third shirt slash um, wild card shirt to take to a desert island with you. So what we're going to do now is we're going to sit down with kit collectors and we're going to try and get them to pick five shirts from their collection, if they can. Uh, that they will take to a desert island with them. And then we would, at the end, we're going to ask them to pick one of their shirts that they would keep. If they had to get rid of the other four, which one would be top of their list? And as always, if it is your first time talking kit, be sure to smash a like on the video and also subscribe to the channel. So let's get into it. We have got Tom from El Classico Kits. Uh, you may have seen him before on Get to Know with Ryan from uh ni classic shirts so yeah we've asked him back i know he's got a, an amazing collection so yeah tom thank you very much for coming on desert island kits yeah it's a pleasure mate pleasure to be here it's uh it's been a little while since we spoke last yeah how's everything going uh in terms of the shirt collecting the shirt world yeah good i mean uh i had probably a period like i don't think since june the first half of the year i picked up like 20 20 plus shirts and then since yeah. then i've got nothing and then all of a sudden i've I found a couple now and I, I bought one the other day. I'm just waiting on it being posted. So waiting on that coming. Nice to finally get some else for the collection. We're collecting like MLS shirts as well, especially like old ones. There weren't many about anyway. So it's like yeah. once you get the easy ones, after that, it's just... Gold dust. It, yeah, it's like few and far between. It can be, can be a long period of time before you see anything else. Yeah, I can imagine. I don't know about you, but I've, I think... When you first get into collecting, it's kind of scattergun approach, and it's like, oh, I like that, yeah. I like that, I like that, I like that. And I'm really starting to now sort of narrow in on what I want yeah. to collect and really, really being selective. And I guess with you, because you, you know, a lot of those sort of nighties and hard to get MLS shirts. Is that how, is that, that is that where you find yourself now? You just single fo single minded focus on certain shirts and teams and eras. Y yeah, pretty much. Like, yeah, when I first started, it was like you say, scattergun, like all over the shop, and then yeah. I kind of thought half of these I don't wear half of them I don't actually really like yeah so I just thought I get rid of a load of them and kind of just become a bit more a bit more focused on it and like at first it was just there was like one Nike MLS template that I was trying to get all of them and then I got that and then I kind of was kind of went back to scattergun a bit and just started buying loads of random bits and then I thought I just try and get all of the 90s MLS stuff because otherwise I will just I'll just see something that I think yeah that's all right and I'll just I'll just buy it and I just won't wear it. Uh, so, in terms of your collection, how many? How many are you at now? What's What's the number? The magic number? Honestly, I don't know the specific number. It's probably around fifty. I think okay. it's not. I've not got a massive collection really. Like, obviously, I've got a lot of shirts that were on my site and whatever, yeah. but obviously they're not part yeah. of mine. But my own shirts are, yeah, probably about fifty something like that. Mostly MLS. United and England, really. That, mate, mine's all over sure. I think I'm at I'm 70 odd now, I think. But then I, I really need to trim that down. And I think there's a lot that I wouldn't, I, I don't wear. And I think it's, it's one of them I, I try, I don't want to sell. That's the thing. Like, and one of them, I yeah. don't want to be involved in that selling shirts and having to worry about getting it and having it and whatever. But you got to trim it down some way, aren't you? I guess. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, definitely. There are a lot that are hard to let go of, though. Like, I was looking at selling a couple to fund an MLS shirt and I was like yeah. looking through and I was like, I, I like all of them. Like I don't want to get rid of any of them, but then I'm like, well, I've not worn that in like six months. So why am I keeping it? Well, that's, that's it, mate. And 
So there's a couple I've, I've got a pile just not far from us now that I've had to put together. And even that was it's hard to do. And there's still, there's still a lot more. There's still a lot more tucked away. Yeah. And I'm like, I could easily get rid of you, but do I want to? Yeah. Uh, my partner will tell you, yes, you do want to, <laughs> but it's where, it's where I listen. Uh, moving on to Desert Island Kits then. So you've chosen your five. Yeah. How, how hard was it to, to narrow it down to, to five shirts? Yeah, there were a couple that were like straight away, I knew they'd be in there. And then it was like getting the last the last three, really. Like two of them were dead certs. And then there was like three of them. And I was like, it could be, it could really be a few shirts that like get in that. All right then. So we'll start from well, we've, we've kind of said an order. It doesn't have to be an order of preference. If it is, that that's fine. But yeah, we'll go we'll go through the through the five that you've chosen. So you're stranded on a desert island. Everything you've lost everything in your suitcase. You're left with five football shirts. So at number five, uh, you tell us what is the first shirt that you would like to be stranded with. So the first one is the Tampa Bay Mutiny, 1997 match worn long sleeve. So I mean, to be honest, like. The short sleeve versions of this shirt, I have the short sleeve of the away shirt and I don't really like it that much with the short sleeve. And there's a lot of shirts like that where I really yeah. don't like them short sleeve. Like this as well, like I don't like this in short sleeve, but long sleeve, I just love it. And this one's the same, like the long sleeves just make the shirt. And I just think yeah. obviously with, with these like match worn MLS shirts, the Nike ones, especially from the 90s, like the stitch numbers on the back and all of the stitched patches, I just think, everything about them just looks so good and like it's just made with like you don't get the quality nowadays of, of oh. shirts like that like stitched literally like stitched i don't even know what material it is but machine <laughs> stitch numbers i just love it i think it's great yeah i, I absolutely agree so you say it's match one who I think it's steve ralston i don't know if i've said his name i don't know if i've said his name right but i'm told he was he was okay that's about <laughs> as much as i know about him <laughs> I thought you would have done some research. Once you got his shirt, it's like, I need to know about this guy. And Oh, mate, a, a lot of these MLS players from the 90s are absolute myths. Like, you, I mean, you try and find pictures of them wearing the shirts and yeah. it's just, unless you've got someone like your big names, like uh, Valderrama or like Wijnaldum or someone like that, you, it's just, yeah. it's impossible jobs finding anything about them. So how how do you come across a shirt sort of? Because to me, obviously, I, I know about I know about the MLS obviously from the nineties and stuff like that and um but that that to me is very sort of obscure. How do you come across that kind of kind of shirt? Well, so this one, um there's a guy on Insta because obviously I mean it's quite and quite a few people know that obviously I collect MLS shirts, nineties yeah. MLS shirts, and there's a guy um on Instagram, Grailed Shirts, he sent me a message saying that he had this coming in and asked me if I'd if I'd be interested. I actually got the away from him as well. And yeah, he asked me if I'd be interested. And obviously straight away I was jumped on it. Yeah. It's definitely like now I mean with this one as well, it means this I think this was the last one that I needed to get all of the the mutiny shirts in, in long sleeve, like all of the home shirts in long sleeve. So I definitely needed to get this one straight away. Yeah, amazing. Um so there we go. There's number five on your list. Great pick, great start to the five. Your next one then. Um what is your next pick for your Desert Island kits? So the next one's kind of a bit of a weird one, to be honest. Like, when I bought this, what I'd been told was that it was just just a template that had had, like, the badges and sponsor put on. And, like, that's what I thought it was. So I paid, like, it was, like, 20 quid for it because I just thought, it's nice. Like, I'll just have it anyway and just wear it about. So, so like, for five months or something, I was just wearing it about, like, while I was dossing about doing anything, not really asked about it. And then all of a sudden, a collector told me that it was an actual shirt. The badge had just been changed. So it's this, it's the Hamburg, I think it's 1991 away shirt, again, in long sleeve. Yeah. But yeah, so like the badge on it, it's like, it's circular on this. But oh, yeah. when you look at like all the game pictures, obviously they've got like the, the rectangular flag badge. And for some reason, like someone's obviously like the original badge has just come off whenever, and they've just reapplied this this new badge for it for for whatever reason. But I think it's class. Like I don't really mind the the different badge. No. I just think the shirt like that te the template is just unreal. Yeah, it's like a proper sort of. Did uh, Columbia had a shirt similar to, to that? Did it? A few teams had that template. Yeah, around yeah, that time. yeah. But you, you know, you look, you take that badge off, you put a Manchester United badge on. That's United away kit, isn't it? Really, with a shirt. Yeah, yeah like definitely. That. It's a, yeah, it's that's a, the thing yeah. as well. The sharp sponsor straight away. I was like, right, I'm having that. 
100%. It's like such a, it's the weirdest flight material. Well, not the weirdest, but it's like, it's literally like a, a sweatshirt, like a jumper. It's so thick. It's yeah. just like the perfect, like, winter shirt or whenever it's cold shirt. Oh, mate, I, I imagine it's keeping you warm that you know, yeah. cold yeah. night. So again, I mean, I've, until, until you sent a picture, I don't think I'd ever seen that shirt. So is that something you knew about before or is it something someone offered you or you'd seen and you just thought like yeah yeah so i actually got asked for um yeah, someone just sent me a message just saying like i'm not sure what this is like and i was like right well i, I kind of like it how much do you want for it and they're like which 20 quid and i was like right okay because they were like they've searched for everything and i searched yeah. for everything i was like i can't find anything with a circular badge on like anywhere, anywhere. And i think i have to message to people asking and they they didn't have a clue either so like the guy just said yeah 20 quid and it's yours but like as soon as like i'd never really i like you said I've, ne- I've never seen it before i didn't even know that they were sponsored by sharp so yeah it was a uh, another one that as soon as i got got sent a picture of it i was like i'm i'm getting that 100 percent. that's amazing uh so there we go that was your, your second pick of the five so let's get into number three then and it looks like we're going back to the mls what's your your next pick for us so the next one is this la galaxy 1996 uh home shirt it's a bit of a different one actually so the galaxy writing on that is obviously black on the so on the regular season shirts it was white and on the on the sleeves as well so this like i think it's yellow i mean i'm colorblind but i think it's yellow anyway basically that color was on the other side where the black bit was ah right okay Ah. so this one is what they used for the MLS Cup final in 96 with the change design. Oh, nice. Uh, I've actually got an MLS Cup final badge, like a, a, a patch, oh. but I've just been too scared to put it on. <laughs> I don't want to I, I don't want to ruin it. So I, I'm like, I, I need to get someone that knows what they're doing to do it. Yeah. But yeah, it's just... It's just glass. I just love it. I just think it's such yeah. a, a nice design, and I, I like the fact that obviously it's it's kind of different to the regular ones you see as well. Hundred oh, percent. It reminds me of a kind of shirt you would see in like an American high school drama around the nineties that the kids yeah. were wearing, like dead oversized, dead baggy, tucked into yeah. some oversized jeans. It's like proper screams nineties America. That yeah, version. it does. It really does. It really and does. I think I mean I think all of the the night shirts in ninety six do that as well. Like they're That's all cool. just completely outrageous designs with stupid colors on but that's what that's what makes them like that's what makes them what they are absolutely mate Def- defo adds something to them shirts and like say for it to be sort of the opposite way to the regular season shirt makes it a bit more special i guess doesn't it knowing that yeah it's a totally different design that's a an outstanding one was that a high one on your list when you're collecting these 90s yes yeah, so like the the ones that i'm really trying to get hold of first are the 96 shirts because they're, they're the hardest to get hold of really and the the ones that there's quite a lot of of like little variations between them there's some that are like like the metro stars home shirt there's one where so on the sleeve for that one it's the same with that like the wing kind of yeah. zigzag design on the on one of the ones i'm going to show later there's a there's a different design on the sleeve and the Metro Stars in like a, a preseason game, like a, a publicity game before the MLS was starting, they had like the different sleeve design and they only ever wore it one game. So it was never released, only worn then. So that's like the ultimate one, but I'll never get that. No, unless unless somehow like a, a player that played in it sends me a message and like, do you want this shit? And it, yeah. Any of them players that played in it, if you're watching this, you know, go and shout from <laughs> and go and sell him. Go and sell him a shirt. Make his dreams come true because, you know, we all deserve to have our dreams come true, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think it's, uh, it's another cracking pick. I'm looking forward to your next one. So number number four on your list, I think this probably, personally, obviously, you know, we're both big big United fans. So this one for me is probably number one, I would yeah. say. But yeah, tell us yeah, your next pick in your Desert Island kits. Yeah, so this one is obviously the 1991 Cup Winners' Cup shirt. I just... I don't know, like for me, like that is just is a United kit as close to perfection that you're ever gonna come. Like it's just and I think especially with those Adidas kits, taking away the the snowflake one, the yeah. this and the home shirt, they're so simple. Like the minor bits of detail, like the pattern on the cuffs and the the detail, the like the jackal pattern in the yeah. in the material. They just it's like things that you only notice up close, but they, they just make the shirt. And I think this is one of probably one of my favourites because it's one that like 
as a kid, obviously, you, you know about some old shirts when you're a kid anyway, but like you, you always think like, I'm never going to be able to have one of them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So to like finally be able to get to get this, it was just like this. This is like the top for me as a United shirt. I'd love one in long sleeve, a match worn one, but again, that'll never happen. <laughs> Stop saying that, mate. You never know. Does just think positive thoughts, put it out there into the universe. You never mate, know what can happen. Mate, you I do not have the money to get one of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's that. What I liked about that that shirt and that kit overall was it was all white, which I don't think we've ever really seen. Well, I mean, we have seen United playing all white and sort of having chain shorts. For that that one, for some reason, it just stands out as a all white United kit with the, the red trim on on there, the socks as well as the obviously the, the cuffs as well. I just think for me, it's one of the like I agree with you, it's one of the best. United away shirts, I think that is definitely yeah. just. And I think it goes to show as well. Like people say about like the nineties that all of the shirts were like wild designs and all of this, and like they're kind of going back to that now. And I think it just goes to show that you, a shirt doesn't have. I mean, I'm saying this with a shirt that's got wings on behind me, but the <laughs> shirt doesn't have to have like all of those weird and mad bits on it for it to be a yeah. good shirt. Like sometimes simple if done right can be can be better and i think that's like to me that's better than the 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 blue and white one the 1992 away that we had the adidas one i, I think yeah. that's a better shirt for me yeah I think, I think you know as we've seen with adidas they've really tried to go back to that one or one or two times haven't they already yeah they kind of overkilled it and i think yeah even this this season's away shirt i think for me it's got a little pattern on, on the cuffs and the, the collar it's so it's simple and it and it really yeah. out. I think it's it's a very underrated kit that for me. Yeah, um, I agree. Yeah. It's but it's kind of I mean even the pattern on that collar as well. It's kind of yeah. similar to this one yeah. as well. And yeah. I was I, I was kind of surprised actually that obviously I thought at the end of last season because it had been thirty years since we or the the season four since we since we won it. I I yeah. thought that they were going to release something for it like a just a like a modern version of it or something like that. But I, I was surprised that they didn't. It just kind of got forgotten about forgotten about yeah, yeah it's, it's it's crazy really you think that because you know fergie's first uh european trophy with united they should have really done something like that. You, you're absolutely right yeah uh, so, so moving on then we'll get to your final shirt number number five or number one whichever way you want to look at it. uh which is the shirt we're ending on that you would take to a desert island tom so, so i think probably quite a few people know this is probably my favorite shirt it's the 1996 Tampa Bay Mutiny, long sleeve, match worn. Oh, mate. Again, like the most random of players, Evans Wise, I think his name was, it's from Trinidad and Tobago. But again, like the stitch numbers, the long sleeve. Yeah. It's just, and these shirts, like, they're hard enough to find. I mean, the, the Tampa Bay Mutiny ones, the home shirts, are like pretty common. Like, probably one of the most common because obviously yeah. Valderrama played for them so that they were. Yeah. Like released in massive numbers, but to find a match worn like a long sleeve, like I, I was messaging Doug from Classic Shirts, and he said like he'd never, he'd never seen a long sleeve before. Yes. So it's just, it's so rare. It's such a, it's such a hard one to find. And it was like as soon as I saw, it was actually at the end of when I'd like finished collecting the other MLS ninety six um, Nike shirts, the same template, and started buying a load of random shirts. Yeah. I actually saw this on eBay and straight away I was like, I've got to get it. I'll get it. Yeah. So I, I just went on message to seller, like made a deal and ended up sorting it out. I think I got it sent to um, a friend over in America, obviously to skip out on customs fees because it <laughs> I already got charged a stupid amount. So yeah. I managed to like get around it that way. But like, and this kind of started like the, the MLS collection, like as it is where I've just gone for everything, really everything nineties. So I think that's, that's like part of why I hold it so high is that it started that. But yeah. also, I just think it's just an unreal shirt. It's an amazing shirt, mate. And yeah, I'm guessing if everyone knows it's your favorite, so we would normally do pick or get you to pick one shirt that you would keep. If you had to get rid of the other four, I'm going to safely put my money on. You probably save this one. This one would be the one, yeah. I don't know. You know, Ooh. after okay. kind of talking about that United shirt, it's kind of made me think twice. Like. I think sentimentality is, it's like a massive player in football shirts. I think, 100%. and obviously people are aware of that, like with 
like getting name sets on shirts of all these massive players like yeah. a Ronaldo name set makes a shirt so much more valuable like monetary wise and like in sentimental terms because people have yeah. such good memories of it and I think having that United shirt and obviously wanting it for so long I think that probably puts it puts it higher up so you're going for the United then yeah 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 I think I am Ah, fair enough, mate. Uh, and just before we finish, is there any sort of honorary mentions that just missed out on your five? Yeah, so there's definitely a couple. Um, obviously, I think this is this is one of my uh, more recent pickups. Uh, another match worn MLS shirt, another long sleeve one. And I, I picked that up a few weeks ago from someone on Twitter that just DM'd me about it. And again, it's one of them where the short sleeves, I don't like it. And then in long sleeves, I just think it's it's just takes it to another level. And like going away from MLS, this um, I'm not going to Sem Semba Wang Rangers FC. Okay. It's another one. Like I just think it's great. It's it's proper random. I, I only saw it because I think I can't remember what his account is uh, Nomad Shirts. I think it is. I, I saw he had one, and it's just I just I love the design on it, and I think. I don't like the Dortmund version of that, but I think the colours just work so well on that one yeah. that it just it just makes it it makes it great. Yeah. And then this the, this Barcelona shirt again is probably another one that I could have squeezed in. Yeah, I love that Barcelona shirt. Mate, you've got you've got an amazing collection. That's three amazing shirts just to miss out on your fire. To be fair to you, mate. Um, but no, I mean I've, I've enjoyed finding out a little bit more about your collection. And yeah, thank you for giving us your your Desert Island kits. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been great. Well, that's it from us from this episode of Desert Island Kit. As always, if it is your first time talking kit, be sure to smash a like on the video and also to subscribe to the channel for more football kit content. So join us next time. We'll be finding out who our next guest is and what kits they'll be taking with them to a desert island. As always, just make sure that you keep talking kit.